Joining us now in the studio is David Rogers, the Vice President for Engineering of Sequent Computer Systems of Portland, Oregon. And back again with us, Dr. Howard Reznikoff of MIT. And if you hear a huge roar in the background, that's David's Sequent Computer over there. Which, uh, tell me about this demonstration you're going to show us on the Sequent. I'm, I brought with me today an example of a computation which can be divided into parallel segments. Uh, the calculation is known as the Mandelbrot set. It's a, a set of numbers in the complex plane, and it's a good example of a problem which is suited for parallel processing because it can be divided up and run on multiple computers simultaneously. Uh, the computer will, in fact, divide up, as is being shown here on the screen, the problem into many tiny segments. The system that I brought with me today has a total of 12 computers, and so the segments will be processed 12 at a time until the result is completed. Okay, so as I understand, we're going to take a look and solve this problem with one processor, and then two, and then 12 at a time. That's correct. Okay. Here you see one processor generating a segment of the image, which will fill the entire rectangle. Then in a moment, we'll add a second processor, and you'll see that the rate of rectangle appearance is doubled. And then finally, we will add all 12 of the processors, and you'll see that the rectangle angles are going okay, up. So at the moment we're seeing a visualization really of the rate at which one processor is solving this problem. This is actually the second, right? Right, we're now up to okay, two. We're now up to two processors right. at a time. And now all 12 and will be at work and you see that the rate of execution is gone up linearly which is one of the advantages of parallel processing. Mm -hmm. Generally, one wants to accomplish one of two results with parallel processing, either a decrease in runtime in order to get results more quickly, or an improvement in throughput. One is measured in results per unit time, and the other is measured in time to reach a single result. David, we talked about the hypercube as one architecture a few minutes ago. And what is the architecture you have? Can you give us a little explanation of what these architectures, different architectures do? Yes. The hypercube is an example of a connection machine, a, a network of computers talking to one another, uh, not sharing the same memory. Mm -hmm. uh, the machine that I brought with me, the Balance 8000, is an example of a closely coupled multiprocessor. All of the processors share access to the same data at every instant in time. One would use a connection machine for problems uh, where the rate of communication among the processors is lower uh, and the distribution of the data is higher. Mm -hmm. And conversely, with closely coupled machines, one works on problems where the intercommunication is more frequent and uh, the volume of data is larger. Now, if we apply this to, let's say, the personal computer industry to some extent, is there, is there any application, let's say, of parallelism in, in personal computing you can think of? Uh, the recently announced PCRT actually allows for parallel computation. Uh, the uh, risk technology machine can be doing engineering and scientific computations, and the uh, PC compatible engine can be doing um, more commercial or oriented applications. Uh, how about like applications to, uh, let's say, let's say in uh, graphics? Well, as you probably know, uh, many computers that we think of as single computers today actually consist of several microprocessors, each dedicated to a specific function. That kind of functional distribution has been employed for a long time. Howard, we just saw 12 processors at work in David's sequent machine. Now, you were involved some time ago with thinking machines, and they have a massive approach, don't they? Tell us about that machine. Yes, the thinking machine's connection machine has 64,000 processors, uh, each of which is a relatively simple one, however, and again, a hypercube interconnection network. And so for a machine like that, which uh, operates in a, an SIMD control mode, which means that there's an orchestra conductor giving the same instruction to all of the processors, graphics problems, uh, problems that are related to image processing, and a wide variety of others as well, can be treated in a way that's similar to what you see here, but on a much more massive scale. David, what are the applications in which your sequent machine is being used? We uh, fall into several categories, uh, some which are runtime oriented and some which are throughput oriented. The runtime oriented ones are, uh, like the example I brought with me, graphical applications, simulation of physical systems, as Eugene Brooks talked about. Um, the throughput oriented ones tend to uh, be transaction oriented, those things where a large number of people want to have access to the same database.